What is up, baby? What is up, my crypto legends? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, bin chicken, take two. Take two. I'm just going to go through the comment section here, guys. One second. Let's see if we are going to be able to make this stream. It seems like I'm having some internet connection issues. Right, it seems like, yes, we are live. Guys, first of all, second attempt, make sure to smash up yes, that like button. Take two. Hello, hello, everyone. Right, this one didn't work out. Make sure to smash up that like button, guys. Thank you very much for the support. I don't know what is going on here. Must be Spanish Wi-Fi, Spanish, Spanish internet, like Mark Dutch says. Right, make sure to smash up that like button. Thank you very much, guys. And let's dive in straight into the content. Um, Bitcoin is going to face some resistance, all right? It is looking pretty, pretty good, all right? Remember, we are basically still in a massive downtrend, okay? I know a lot of people want, I, I'm, I want to become bullish. I want to see, I want, to, I want Bitcoin to, to be bullish in the next coming months. But let's be a really realistic. We do have some major resistance and we are in a major downtrend. OK, guys, now everything's pointing out that, you know, it looks pretty, pretty good. We might see some pumpy action in the next coming weeks, but we are going to see, you know, we are going to face some big, strong resistance. And I'm going to show you the first resistance that I can see for BTC um, right away in this uh, live stream. I'm going to go through Bitcoin dominance is dropping right now. It did manage yesterday to hit um, almost 41% and it's already dropped 1% in between yesterday and today, which is absolutely insane. 1% is quite a few billion, all right, <laughs> from the Bitcoin dominance. And, you know, we are seeing some altcoins having some a pretty nice rally, right? There are a lot of altcoins that we are going to analyze. They are, you know, having a pretty nice pump. One of them, such as, you know, Avalanche, Phantom. And we've got some different other altcoins, you know, also having a pretty decent pump. We've got, you know, look at Rose, guys. Rose has absolutely exploded. Rose just hit an all-time high. Um, yeah, today, basically. Today hit just an all-time high. This was actually yesterday night, sorry. Um, hitting 50 cents, so rose absolutely exploding. You know, this is this will go parabolic at some point, like uh, we were talking uh, during the live streams. We got Meta's DAO having a pretty nice pump, you know, Saito, all of these different altcoins also doing pretty, pretty good. And I know, guys, another altcoin that is, you know, having a pretty nice pump. And this is Caster, guys. Caster, we did, I did some analysis today on Caster. We can't take a look at our, on TradingView. It's forming a beautiful ascending triangle. And it's just breaking out now. You know, we should be reaching around about the 19.95 cents in the next coming days for Caster. Looking pretty, pretty solid. Nice breakout here. And yeah, let's just dive in here through the content. Let's go through the comment section first. Um, right. Thank you, moderators, for joining the live stream. Hey, Andy, what's up? Says Alex. Um, take two, bin chicken. Yes. Average, wow, already the second stream of today. Smash that like button for Andy. Hard work. Thank you, Average, for your insane support. Bitcoin Pumpy, uh, um, Andy's PC. Yeah, exactly. Um, LTC, please. I know it is boring, but they have new securities rolling out this month. Uh, Michael Glenn, let's take a look at Litecoin. Why not? I mean, Litecoin is like the little brother, right? Um, it's the little brother of, of Bitcoin. It is the faster version, right? And um, just let's just let's just zoom out here on Litecoin, see what we can see. Uh, whoop! This is Litecoin against BTC. Let's take a look at the Litecoin BTC charts. Okay, first of all, and I'll go through the comment section to say hello quickly. Uh, in a massive, 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 massive downtrend, as you can see here, creating consistent lower lows, uh, lower highs. Sorry, as you can see, this is Litecoin against Bitcoin. So, definitely in a massive downtrend, but it looks like it's finding a kind of a flaw. I wouldn't be surprised to see Litecoin outperform at some point in the next coming weeks, Bitcoin, right? You do see these kind of massive relief pumps, all right? This is Litecoin against Bitcoin. So, you know, this is screaming, screaming in the next coming weeks. If we do see that alt season for a massive, you know, massive pump here, all right, where you're going to see Litecoin suddenly outperform a little bit uh, Bitcoin for a few days or maybe a couple of weeks. 
because it usually doesn't uh, last long, as you can see, you know, just a massive couple of weeks here of Litecoin outperforming Bitcoin, you know, you, you just have these pumps and then it comes straight back down again, okay? So, you know, what would be a, a good suggestion here if you're in Litecoin? If Litecoin against Bitcoin has a massive, massive pump, then, you know, you probably want to shift Litecoin to Bitcoin or to US dollars or whatever, because yeah, it's, it's very, very likely that it will, uh, outperform, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin for just about a week or two, as you can see in the past, it, it what it does, right? So um, yeah, let's take a look at Litecoin here on on um, the chart, see what we can see. Um, basically, long time since we haven't taken a look at Litecoin, uh, we are going to face some kind of resistance. We are going to face some kind of resistance, which is at the $145. Uh, that area here where we can see, you know, there's a, you know, this major box where we have been bouncing several, several times as support and also as resistance, very, very hard to get um, above this range. As you can see, I'm talking about the $145 area. This is plus minus a few dollars because of the volatility, because of the wicks, right? You can see massive resistance there, massive resistance here. We finally broke up because it was a first retest. Now guys, remember, First retests usually um, have a massive rejection, okay? They usually have a massive rejection or a massive bounce if it's support, right? You have broken here the, the support area. Look how the first major resistance got a rejection here. Now, second attempt, that was perfect. We created a double bottom, we broke out of it. Now, what happened here once we retested this range for the first time, we got a massive bounce. What happened the second time? Yes, we did get a small bounce, but we finally broke it, as you can see here. Now, this is gonna be the first retest. Now, usually on the first retest of a major resistance or a support, you don't usually break it. This doesn't mean that we could actually slice through it. It is very, very likely, but we're looking at the probabilities here, looking at the chart, and the most probable scenario would be getting a rejection here, potentially retesting the lows again in the next coming uh, days i would say this is a daily chart so yeah it is very possible now good thing about this that will be the moment to see if we, if a litecoin is going to manage to create a double bottom or we are going to uh, come back down to retest the summer lows so in my opinion having a massive downtrend now for the last um i would say couple of months actually this is from november Trend is your friend, trend is still to the downside. Do we have a clear sign that this is the bottom? No, not really. Um, we are retesting resistance for the first time, which is the $145 range. Um, I would say it would be very, very likely to, to get a rejection from this point. And then we would have to see if we are gonna create a double bottom or we're actually gonna retest the summer lows, right? That's what I think. Uh, let's take a quick look at the four hourly chart on Litecoin. Um, yeah, I mean, we do have we do have a lot, a lot of resistance above us. Now, I wouldn't trade this short um, straight away. OK, if we do have a big solid green candle like we are having right now, it just doesn't make sense to short, you know, just a massive pump into the resistance. Right. Because this could actually still continue to the upside. What we want to see is rejection. We want to see consolidation. We want to see, you know, this kind of action or this kind of action where you finally do get that, you know, that reversal point, right? Okay. You want to see this kind of action. So you know that you're potentially not going to get above that area. So a little bit of that action there, a couple of attempts with a couple of wicks, then you could potentially com uh, confident short this, uh, this, uh, tr um, this rejection, right? If, it, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I would just wait, guys, because you could potentially just create one candle here or two and then slice uh, slice back up, okay? So I would wait for a little bit of sideways action here uh, for Litecoin. After that, you know, we are potentially at the verge of a massive reversal, like I said, on Bitcoin. Uh, let's take a look at, um, yeah, basically Bitcoin. Now, a lot of people are screaming for this. Is, the, is this the bottom? Uh, it, it potentially is. It potentially is the bottom. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see another retest down below forty thousand um, dollars. So I'm we, I'm going to talk about about the re resistance le levels. Okay, as soon as I go through the comment section, I'm going to go through the resistance levels that Bitcoin has. Remember, we are still in a in a pretty pretty sharp downtrend. 
are we just at the verge of that massive massive reversal it is very very possible guys i wouldn't be uh I would be pretty confident in longing the next leg down on Bitcoin if we do see some type of consolidation. I would uh, be pretty, pretty confident to start longing that um, that dump if we do have it. So, um, yeah. Um, hey, we back, baby, says Lue. Yes, we are. Uh, uh, wonder is Lauren is going to make it over here. Her and her he cast a hate. Um, a lot of caster haters, unfortunately, and it's absolutely a great project. Yeah, the application is going to be insane. Um, that was a nice small break for everyone to make their cup of tea. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm live. Yes, thank you, Michael Glenn, for the insane support. What's up, Dave? Joseph, hello, everyone. Thanks for the the support, brother Roman. Here, how are you doing, my man? Uh, let's take a look at polka dot. Let's take a look at polka dot. I always try and cover. I always try and cover uh, Bitcoin and and you know S and P and some other of my stuff. But I end up you know just going through the comments and taking a look at the Litecoin, uh, at Litecoin altcoin charts. And yeah, that's what I mean. I'm here you know to do some analysis. My my point of view on on these altcoins for you guys. So absolutely, absolutely. We can talk about Bitcoin afterwards, but Bitcoin is is the leader, guys. Bitcoin is the leader, and you know what is good for altcoins right now is Bitcoin pumping, all right? Bitcoin pumping, and and also apart from Bitcoin pumping, we got the Bitcoin dominance going down, which is absolutely great. So if Bitcoin pumps and Bitcoin dominance goes down, uh, yeah, this is a uh, the best recipe you could have for for altcoins basically because there's a massive amount of interest coming back in to crypto basically in general so let's take a look at polka dot polka dot is maybe forming a massive double bottom as you can see here on the chart we did get massive support from this range as you can see on the chart let me just zoom out here quickly on polka dot and i think you know something interesting about polka dot let me just take a look at the fib levels here from the high uh, from the low to the high, yeah, we were basically just just about hitting um, slightly below that golden pocket ratio, a good area right over here. And we are confirming that, you know, we are finding massive support here. So massive uh, bounce here on Polkadot is very, very likely up to about the $30, $32. Very, very possible in the next coming days, all right? It looks like that we found a pretty nice solid floor in the immediate short, tour, uh, short term. The reason why is because of, you know, this movement there, all right? This floor here and this one that we've just created, okay? So looking very, very nice here. Any type of retracement here would be nice, in my opinion, for a potential leg up here on Polkadot. Uh, looks like it is going to recover. So not looking too bad in the immediate short term. Looking pretty, pretty good here with this solid floor that we are creating, double bottom. Um, hello, Andy, big fan, uh, Chinese here. Hello, welcome. Uh, bup, bup, bup. Let's take a look. Hey, dude, uh, Barnsley here. Hello, everyone, Joseph, thank you for the insane support. Yeah, it's the Spanish Wi-Fi, says Joseph, yeah. Uh, I have a pretty good internet connection. I don't know why sometimes we have this issue. Um, has Caster launched? Freezing. Hi, Andy. Um, no, Caster application hasn't launched yet. Uh, the app is not launched, but it will be launched. Uh, I did a collaboration with Carl from the Moon, and we are talking about Caster being. You know, he was talking about Caster being launched in about three months. Okay, I mean. Obviously, the team is working 24-7. They want to deliver the best. They don't want to have any, you know, order flows. I mean, these uh, saturated orders. This is the uh, this is a main problem now for a lot of, you know, different exchanges and app um, crypto applications. You know, suddenly if a lot of people are using it, you know, there is a limit, limit of uh, transaction per second. So they want to, you know, provide the best, best application and they're working 24-7. Uh, supposedly, it's going to be launched um late q1 or maybe beginning of q2 so we did say three months from now so maybe that is going to be march or april and i've seen the teaser it looks absolutely crazy okay it definitely gonna gonna be 
it's going to revolutionize the, the adoption, in my opinion, uh, if they if they do deliver with the application that they, they, they have been showing me, which is absolutely crazy. The transaction speed is insane. Zero, uh, um, zero fees. And also the swap engine is absolutely insane where you can send Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, cast a token and, you know, receive US dollar, Euro. I mean, I mean, this is absolutely insane. You might think, yeah, crypto.com has got this or, or, or Celsius or any other mobile application that can send crypto and fiat. And this is not, not true. They do not have, you know, this easy, friendly um, um, system to do it. So let's take a look at some other altcoins, guys. Um, Let's take a look at some altcoins. I have Average here with the altcoin request. Thank you very, very much, my man. Thank you very much for your insane uh, support. Now, first of all, before going through the altcoin request, um, right, Ben Murat says, Saito, Metis, THG, Ciders, CGG. Uh, I guess uh, that you want me to do analysis on then. It's a fake out 100%, says Saranj. Woo! It's a fake out 100%. Well, it doesn't mean to be a fake out because it's um, we're basically not breaking uh, very, very, very strong resistance. I think, you know, this is basically going to be, um, and this is only my opinion, we are going to start phasing some very, very strong resistance in between 44 and 44.5K. And I want to explain why, guys. I want to explain why. We want to take a look, you know, let's take a look. Um, let's take get this out of the way one second we don't need the vpvr and i just want to show you with fib levels all right fibonacci retracement if we go from the start of the dump right here which is right over there to the bottom bit you know we've got golden pocket just been uh, just about to be hit right now okay so we've got the golden pocket ratio right there which is going to be heavy resistance from the top to the bottom there okay so we've got one level we've got one, we want to see confluence right there why we are going to potentially get heavily rejected. So we've got one right there, okay? From the top to the low, Fibonacci, most common uh, retracement, 61%. Now, volume, volume, very important, volume. If we zoom in here on the volume, we can see, you know, these candlesticks right there, okay? They're the, they're the highest, apart from this one, which was the, the massive bounce that we got from below $40,000. We got these ones right over here, which is at the 40, 44. Yeah, basically it's the close of this massive candle, right? We've got the last one here, right there. Massive candle with volume. We know, you know, if you've been an old subscriber, this usually uh, provides a lot of resistance or support depending on where you're gonna hit it. So it is exactly, let me just tell you exactly where the close is of this candle. It's the 44.65. So for $44,650 is a major, major resistance zone because of this candle over here with huge amount of volume. And it is also the golden pocket from this major drop. Now, another uh, good way to, um, you know, you could zoom, zoom out and take the next fib level. Okay, where's the next fib level? Well, the next fib level would be at this peak over here, right? This peak over here, if you take a look at the daily, this is also an entire drop, right? All of this is an entire drop, so you can take the fib levels from over there also, in my opinion. And if you take a look at the fib level from the top to the bottom bit, you know, the 38% Fibonacci retracement is exactly at that 61 also. So if there's just, in my opinion, there's some kind of rejection, some type of consolidation, and a potential small pullback is is almost imminent, in my opinion, when we see the, the, this kind of confluence, all right, from the drop from here, from the drop from here. Um, yeah, so... That's why I have also this box area. If we do consolidate here slightly uh, for a few hours, I'm going to think too short because basically, you know, we are in a downtrend, okay? We are um, we are in a downtrend. We, this is the retracement. We do have strong resistance and it would be a good short opportunity. Now, the question is, where would I short to, <laughs> right? Where would I short to? I think I would short to this level, right? To the next major major resistance zone and if we take a look at this as a pump also from here depending on where we where we consolidate and get the rejection 
you could always take a look at fib levels for a potential uh, for a potential target and you know usually i, I think it's about 78 percent of the times from a pump or a dump you at least hit the 38 percent levels right so it would be a, um, a good level and it is exactly that 38 percent all depending on where we where we pump actually we don't really know but you know, potentially it should be around this level, that 42.7, that major resistance that we were talking about yesterday that we needed to break, okay? If we take a look at the one hourly, it's that major, major resistance point right there. You had the wick, you had this, you had this. We finally were sitting at the resistance and then we finally broke out. So yeah, if we do get that kind of pullback, it would make sense to get a bounce from this level, right? From that 42.7 range. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this wasn't a successful breakout, but this was, seems like it, some pretty decent volume. I wouldn't have traded any, you know, anything there long or, or anything because it, it wasn't a, a successful breakout. We were just consolidating at the resistance. So my, I think, I believe so with the analysis, like I showed you this major box area and on the one hourly also, you can see on the one hourly, this last first, this first candle from the drop is where we do see this massive amount of volume guys so stay cautious on that you know we are pumping 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 i think maybe people are going to get overexcited. we could get a first major rejection here in the next hours you know day or two um so yeah I, i'm potentially thinking of shorting this i will say in my telegram group if i'm going to short or long so i'm just going to be waiting patiently to see what we do i mean i like to see consolidations i don't want to get the first wick okay i don't want to catch the wick there because it, we could slice through it we could slice through it so yeah um that's what that's what i think about bitcoin okay that's what i think about bitcoin could still go to high levels and start getting some type of resistance um curious enough you know funny enough if you also take a look at the extension we are just about to make a one to one if I'm not wrong, right? So if we take a look at the short term guys, just to see, you know, how, where we could potentially get that, that rejection and why it's pretty, pretty cool to see this. If we take a look at the low part here from this wick, the high part from this other wick, right? And then you have the next low one, which is here, right? And then you have the next, the next leg up, right? So if you take a look at the Fibonacci extension tool to, 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 and it can tell you approximately where the extension can go. It's usually a one-to-one. -one. It can go higher than that. It can be lower, but usually it's, um, you know, most of the times it is a one-to-one, -one, you know, with higher probability. And if you take a look at, you know, the pump from here, to the retracement from here and this is looking at the one hourly chart okay going a little bit into the the scalping territory the one-to-one -one fibonacci extension from here to here is all the way to 44.3 and where's the 44.3 just at the end of that candle where the huge amount of volume um, we got um, 62 percent we got the golden Fibonacci retracement from this top okay from the start of this drop all the way to the low part this is also got in pocket so a lot of things are connecting that that you know 44 44.5 range you know this bot range I think we're gonna get a massive rejection uh, from those levels right let me go through the comment section here right away and um, yeah, yesterday, S&P 500, we were talking about, you know, this is beautiful. We have a beautiful drop here on, on, on the Bitcoin dominance, which is great for altcoins. We're going to see a lot of altcoins popping. Um, what else? What else? S&P 500 is actually, you know, it's actually, you know, it might be breaking this resistance. It's at, it's at the late resistance zone. I mean, the thing about the S&P 500 lately for, for a long time, it just makes these massive, massive, you know, Fibonacci here. Mm, uh, yeah, a golden pocket is not um, very much respected from these because I don't know, it's a little bit manipulated in my opinion, you know, especially with the Fed news and stuff. We do see massive, massive V-shaped recoveries. We are in, a, in an ascending channel, so it is basically bullish. I did a small short. I, I got stopped out at break even because I moved my stop, and um, basically I shorted right there. I was planning to take profits here, but I was getting live ready and I didn't, so it just got stopped out at break even. So yeah, basically that would have been a great zone right there at that box to take profits, basically. And we're just getting a massive, massive reversal right now on the S&P, so it's looking pretty, pretty bullish. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll analyze the situation, see if the, the, the S&P, you know, 
if it does manage to break all-time highs uh, before Friday, I think it's going to be pretty good for Bitcoin. We could see a lot of strength on Bitcoin also. Uh, FOMO today says, Randy, yeah, we got uh, some people saying it's a massive big fake out. Some people are saying that, you know, this is a very legit pump and... Um, and we are going to much higher levels. The bottom is in. Uh, Bitcoin Census Discord is great. Thank you very much. Yeah, we got Average here. Average here, one of my moderators, managing to sort out very, very well with the Discord. Absolutely phenomenal work from Average. Um, uh, Phantom, let's take a look at Phantom also. What about Atom? Oof, we're going to take a look at all of these cryptos. I just want to scroll down and just say hello to, to I don't know, just say hello to, um, to a lot of the people here. Make sure to smash up that like button, first of all. Um, right, let's take a look at average. Where's average? I've got all the coins here listed. Um, short or long, short-term scalping. Well, if you're looking for a scalp a day trade, um, like I said, I'm gonna. I, I'm telling you where the most resistance is. Most of the resistance here is in between um, 44.2 and 44.6. Uh, 44.2, 44.6. I think we're going to get a massive rejection from there. And yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, basically, like I said, I think there's going to be a rejection there. Now, you do what you want, your analysis. I think, you know, looking at the down, uh, the trend also, trend is to the downside. Uh, a little bit of more pumpy action is very, very possible to that area. So anyway, I'm not I'm never going to say if you need to short or sell. OK, I can tell you what I think. And I think, you know, I would potentially do it, make a short position from there. Very, very tight stop loss. If we do consolidate here, have a little couple of wicks. Uh, if we do have wicks confirmation, then I'll put a stop loss above the wick and then, you know, potentially short this all the way to the 42.7. Now, that is a very, very strong resistance that is going to turn into some type of support right and might get broken might not but anyway you, if you want to if you want to scalp this if you want to just do a quick profit you know uh you, you just take it you take it and you take profits that small movement then you're out you don't you don't think you're going to come to lower levels you don't think you're going to reverse you just you know get in and you get out as soon as you have some pretty decent profits there um right let's take a look um <laughs> You do you, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Redune, thanks for the super chat. Let's take a look at all of these altcoins. I've got average here with all these altcoins. Which YouTuber has so many, so many um, moderators? I mean, this is absolutely insane. The amount of moderators that I got supporting me is, is absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Thank you guys for the insane support. Let me just go here through. Um, let me go through here. Uh, right, let me just go through here. Uh, the comment section, yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, how many comments I'm getting here with these different altcoins. Let's go through most requested coins, Solana. Let's try and make a quickie here, okay? Let's try and make a quickie. Let's go through Solana first. Um, Solana, let's go through Solana. Go on then. How is Solana doing? How is Solana doing? Um, take a look at this. Um, Solana is not looking, it's in a downtrend basically. What we analyze here with Solana is that we need to get above basically this trend line to the downside, right? We've got this trend line with these lower highs right there. So it would be nice to get above this major resistance to start becoming pretty, pretty bullish for the next higher low, right? Uh, if we do break this level uh, for Solana, in my opinion, just to keep it simple, it is very, very likely that we'll be creating a higher low, uh, all right? So you are creating lower lows, you are creating lower highs. If as soon as we break this trend here and this major, major resistance level, that should be it should be turning pretty nicely into support with volatility. There should be a, a very very good opportunity there for a for a long position, uh, at least to retest the highs from wherever you you pump to. Right? Only if this happens. Only if this happens. Um, but uh, yeah, looking at this chart, it looks like that this level is going to hold. You know, it's it's. I think it's more likely to to continue here to the upside to retest this resistance instead of falling and, and falling below this uh, this one hundred and twenty dollar range. 
right? It looks like um, we are very, very likely going to have that movement on Solana. Just a quick, you know, overview of the chart with no indicators. Um, yeah, very much looks like that we're going to have that that pumpy action. Now let's take a look at we have taken a look at dot. Let's take a look at H bar. This is not one of my favorites. Just a quick overview, guys. We're gonna do a fast fast here, a quick fast fast on on the chart, and I'm gonna give you my opinion to see what we could see. Um, right, let's go to the four hourly here on H bar. Um, yeah, it's not looking great. Not looking great. We are still basically creating lower highs here. Uh, we broke this kind of ascending triangle. We broke it to the downside though. We broke it to the downside. Um, H bar, H bar. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we're probably going to get heavily rejected from this range. Um, our volume looks pretty good here. Yeah, I think major, major level to get above here to, to, to become bullish again on H bar would be this $34, $0.34, cents, sorry, $0.34, cents, I think it's the most, you know, important level here on H bar right now. Um, yeah, basically, why would you want to become bullish after breaking this major level? So then you do print a higher low, right? Uh, a high high, sorry. So you are creating lower highs right there. You want to get above this level to start, you know, creating a, a new uptrend. Um, so far, so I, I wouldn't become bullish until you break above this range. It is still pretty, pretty bearish, and we will maybe going to get rejected from this from this level. So if we take a look at Fib levels, um, just for a quick example, we can see a pump there. They're there. You get a retracement, and you get that pump back again. So from high to low, you basically hit that 50% uh, Fibonacci retracement. What we could see here now is also this. We are just hitting that 50%. You could hit 62%, and we are going to get heavily rejection from there and roll back down. So stay, stay cautious here. Stay, stay cautious with um, H bar. Let's go here through XRP also. Um, let's go through XRP. Let's go through XRP here straight away. One second. Whoop. Let's go through XRP. I'm gonna second, guys. I'm just sending the the link right now to the community chat. We'll go through XRP straight away. Let's go through XRP straight away. See what's going on with XRP. Uh, I want to do a poll. I want to do a poll. I want to ask a question to the community. See what they, you know, I want to ask them, okay, for Bitcoin. Let's focus on Bitcoin here in the immediate short term. Let's focus on Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, we know the bottom. What was the bottom here with this massive wick? Uh, wouldn't be a curious uh, question right now here for the community. We've got 418 watching. Make sure to smash up that like button, guys. Let's make 200 likes. The low here was 39.5, okay? Let's go 39.5. Was 39.5 the bottom for Bitcoin? Was 39.5K the bottom for Bitcoin? Or are we gonna go to lower levels in the next coming weeks, right? There we go. Poll is there. Was 39.5 the bottom for Bitcoin? Let me know, guys, in the comment section, in the poll. Andy, what's happening with Solana? I've just taken a look at Solana right now. So there's the poll, guys. I want to know your opinion. Let's see if a lot of people um, think that this is going to be the, the bottom for Bitcoin, okay? The 39.5K level, this massive wick here. Was this the bottom for Bitcoin or are we going to come roll down in the next coming months and test the lower bit of this wick? OK, that is the question on the poll. Let me know in the comment section, guys. Um, right. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. I got my moderators and I'll go through XRP straight away. I'll go through XRP straight away, but I'm just going to take my take a look at my mods. Um, yeah, thanks, um, Ridon, for the super chat. No question from you. 
I guess. Let's take a look at XRP because that was one of the requested coins from the stream. Having a little bit of pump action right now. We are getting supported very, very nicely here from this level. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. I think XRP does have a chance to run all the way up back up to the 90 cent level. And you may ask, why do you think so? Because, 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 um, yeah, basically we are, we are bouncing from this major consolidation, major support resistance level right there, as you can see. We just wicked below it, managed to bounce several times. Consolidation right there. And um, yeah, next major resistance level would be the 90 cents. So from this top to the bottom, we may be going to see um, XRP go to almost to 90 cents. So I do see XRP moving from 80 cents to 90 cents in the next couple of days. Uh, we might be getting heavily rejection from that point, you know, the golden pocket from the top here to the low. We are in a downtrend, so stay cautious. This could continue. We're just having a relief rally. We would have to break here or one dollar area. You know, um, we would have to break this range to, to start becoming bullish, at least break the, the $1 here. It wouldn't be enough to get volatility here because you could roll back down. So, um, yeah, stay cautious. I do see this having that relief rally all the way up here. Stay that's very stay cautious when we hit 90 cents on, on, on XRP because you could roll back, back down. You know, a potential risky trade would be, you know, putting a stop loss there, entering stop loss above here. If you start seeing choppy candles at that level, you could see a, a drop. I do not trade XRP, it's extremely volatile. You could just get a massive wick to absolutely slice you and then continue to the downside. Uh, volatility is absolutely crazy. I've only ex traded XRP uh, a couple of times. I must have got stopped out the, both of the times because the volatility is absolutely crazy. I do not like it. I basically just like to trade uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, traditional stocks. Um, H bar, taking a look at H bar. Thank you, average, for the insane support. Um, um, hey, Pratesh, how is Andy looking today? Says Mark Dutch. It, was he the one calling me a sexy beast? Was he the one saying I'm a sexy beast? He better not be. Um, right, let's take a look at H bar. Um, H bar has been, uh, we've taken a look at H bar actually. Let's take a look at Shiba, Shiba Inu. Let's take a look at Shiba. Um, portfolio is doing good guys. Who here has portfolios? Who's, who's holding a, a bag of different cryptos? My portfolio is looking pretty good actually. It's looking pretty, pretty good here for the last few days after the massive drop that we've had for the last couple of weeks. Um, Shiba Inu is getting a little bit of a bounce right now. Remember, guys, what we talked about here that, you know, Shiba Inu might be entering a, a nice, nice accumulation zone if you are bullish on Shiba. And I think Shiba Inu is one of those meme coins that is going to do well. It will be doing well for the next coming years. Um, I think we're entering a very, very good buy zone. Shiba Inu is entering a buy zone. We can see those effects now, right now, um, of, you know, pumpy action. If we start going sideways and start creating slightly higher lows here and going sideways, it's going to be looking very, very, very good to start buying in big on Shiba Inu. Remember the last time that we had a few months of large consolidation, you know, let's see if we finish January and part of February here with nice sideways action. You know, last time this happened back here in the summer, it was absolutely crazy. This, you know, this range was an insane buying zone. So we are potentially going to enter a buying zone here on Shiba at the three levels. So we could hit the, you know, below three levels, above three levels, below, it's going to have a nice sideways range. Overall looking pretty, pretty good. Not much to analyze on, on, on this, basically. Um, I think, just let me just take a look at the daily and zoom out here. I just want to take a look to see if we are, you know. Yeah, we're basically at, in between the, the we're hitting basically almost the last touch of, of uh, support here from the Fib levels. We've got the 23 and the 33 here. All right, important Fib levels right there and we might be just ranging from this area. It might be the best opportunity here for Shiba Inu. And if Shiba Inu went all the way but, um, to the top here, to the all-time high, it is about a 3x from its current levels, okay? So 
Um, I think that we will reach all time highs. I'm not going to say, is it going to be next month? I'm not going to be giving any dates. You know, it might be in two years. We don't really know. But uh, I think it's very, very likely Shiba Inu will. It does have a burning mechanism. It has a huge army. You know, uh, there are some developers working behind the Shiba uh, Inu project. So it, apart from a meme coin, it's actually going to be, you know, a financial instrument, right? So, which sounds pretty, pretty crazy, but it looks like that, um, yeah, this is the world that we live in. And yeah, we might have um, meme coins as a world reserve currency, unfortunately. So yeah, let's just um, analyze the situation. I think all-time highs will be inevitable at some point uh, for Shiba Inu by, uh, if we do consolidate sideways for the next few weeks uh, during, in, in this range. Um, right, so um, let's just go. Matic overtake Shiba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Matic, um, my dog loves Shib, sheep, says George. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let me take a look at ADA, IOTX, IOTX. Whoa, IOTX. I remember IOTX. I was calling IOTX for a potential bottom at 10 cents. I think we might have, um, last time I saw it, it's just sitting at that level, guys. I'm, I'm not changing my, um, my prediction here on IOTX. We went slightly below 10 cents. We've got to say, we've got to say, but it, it's, in a major buying zone. It's in a major buying zone. You know the deal. Just keeping it simple here with price action and volume. Okay. Um, we're basically sitting at the largest point of volume right over here, as you can see on, on, on the chart. So we got, I mean, you, you can see it here, guys. You can see it. We're basically at the, t at the you know, this major pump with this green candle has a huge amount of volume. And this provides support. What I do not like, okay, the only bad news is that you are potentially kind of creating lower highs, but that's what happens when you enter a consolidation phase. Um, so I, I'm, I'm gonna say there is one, there is another leg up at least for, for IOTX after a consolidation. I do see a major alt season. I do see a relief rally for Bitcoin and a lot of altcoins doing very, very well, okay, this Q1 of, of 2022. So my take here is maybe another couple of weeks of consolidation before we see IOTX uh, potentially re reach the highs here, just above 25 cents, which is over a 2x from here. So why did I come with that conclusion? Well, the reason why is because you got volume with this massive candle here and the close of the daily candle is right there. And you can see how it's been providing support a few times. Now, we do not like hitting support many, many times because the more times you touch it, the more times it's likely to break. But because there's a huge amount of volume and I think we are gonna go sideways and start creating some nice um, sideways action without retesting the support many times, at some point you are gonna create a higher low and it's gonna be looking pretty, pretty good for a, for a blast off in my opinion. So I, that's what I got quickly here for IOTX, just looking at price action and volume. Um, Let's take a look at how many, too many coins here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to take a look at all of them. Atlas, let's take a look at Atlas. Um, Star Atlas, I mean, I have to check out with the dates, all right, of the launch. I have to I have to check out the dates of the launch uh, for Star Atlas. Um, uh, I'll, but this crypto gaming project is gonna be absolutely insane. We don't have any launch date updates, I think. Um, but anyway, I'll have to check this out, guys. We want to know. Uh, it's a it's a really cool project. One, if it's going sideways, and they've got two tokens. Okay, we're going to take a look at the Atlas token. They also got a Polis token. It looks like we are entering an, a, a pretty nice range here on the on the um, Atlas token, which is just eight cents level. It seems like the eight cents range is a very very solid level, as you can see here, bouncing there, bouncing here and also is where we are getting supported. So is this gonna be the floor for Atlas? It, it potentially is. It potentially is. Um, best thing you could do, at, what I don't like about Star Atlas, the token itself, um, it does have, it, it is pretty large in market capitalization, you know, fully diluted. They do have 3.1 billion already, okay? You, you know, market cap says 190, yeah, but fully diluted, okay? Invested in it is already 3.6. Uh, 3.1 sorry so 
it's relatively big already, but it will go to tens of billions potentially if you know if the game is going to be as good as they're saying. And you know the deal, guys. When they have when these games or projects launch, okay, it, this has got to be a kind of a buy the rumor, buy it. But uh, by the rumor, sell the news, right? And the news would be the launch of the gaming project. So um, it's almost going to be guaranteed that there is going to be a massive pump just a few days before or during the um, the uh, the launch of the game, right? It's going to be one of the best crypto gaming projects that there is on the Solana project on the Solana blockchain. So yeah, it, it just makes sense that on the launch just a few days before or on the actual same day there's gonna and there will be some kind of hype okay we don't know what the exact date of the launch so any sideways action to the downside or sideways action is going to be just a great accumulation zone as soon as it starts pumping like crazy on the launch you start taking profits right it seems like um a very easy strategy to make some gains here with the uh, star atlas overall the eight cent level here for atlas token looks like a very solid level so let's take a look at um, what else can we take a look here? There's so many different coins. Phantom, we got we saw Phantom. We did see a, a pretty decent pump on Phantom. Wasn't expecting this this pump because we absolutely crushed a major resistance zone. Um, yeah, we basically crushed a resistance. Um, this resistance here at the two dollar fifty. Phantom is an absolute beast. It's an absolute beast and it's relatively low market cap compared to Cardano, Solana, you know, all of these L1s that are, you know, in the top 10, such as Polkadot, Cardano, Solana, Ethereum, uh, Avalanche is uh, 23 billion and Phantom is only about 7.5 7 billion. So this could easily still do a 2, 3x. Um, it's, a, it's a mid cap for a layer L1. Okay, L1s, you know, they're in the tens of billions. Tens of billions are usually the, the L1s. Um, so, yeah, Algorand is still relatively slow. I'm not following too much on, on Algorand, but I think Phantom will overtake Algorand. Um, so, yeah, I, I, Phantom is just an absolute beast. So, it looks like we are on the way to, to all-time highs. I think what is going to happen here is yeah this is basically when you see this on a chart you it, it is almost guaranteed that we are going to break these highs and as soon as we break these highs we are basically going to reach all-time highs it's the last point of resistance right um i i thought we were going to see some type of rejection here we did but just once we did just get one rejection because we did see you know the the resistance here that zone as soon as we came down came up one rejection small double bottom right there and back up here so my take on this one you know best most simple strategy that you could do here for a potential scalp is if you do come down to this level where you do have with where well, I do have this box right where we've been bouncing several times or well, several always been bouncing there at least once <laughs> So why wouldn't we bounce, you know, once right now after breaking the resistance, right? So as you can see, every time you have been breaking out this resistance, you bounce once. So you break out, you bounce once, you break down, you bounce once. Uh, yeah, you, this was already twice because you were underneath it. Um, so yeah, we've got a bounce here also. We haven't retested it here looking at the four hourly chart range. So a quick wick to the downside, it might be a very, very quick bounce. It might be a good scalping opportunity. Remember, if you want to support the channel also on Bybit, you get the best bonus available. Casta has gone <laughs> almost exactly to the target already. Uh, I did analysis on this. I hope it was posted on the Bitcoin Sensors um, Twitter account. But um, yeah, this was a little bit time sensitive because on the one hourly. But um, yeah, this one, you can see casted absolutely exploding all, all the way above 90 cent. This is the target from this ascending triangle. So, um, anyway, what I was saying, you got the best bonus available down below on, on Bybit, okay? On Bybit, you got the best bonus available, which is up to $4,100. Maybe a lot of you know this already. It's a good way to support the channel because I get a small commission. You get the best bonus available, so... If you got your bonus on Bybit, make sure to check out Femix. On Femix also is $4,100 worth of bonus. 
Right, let's take a look at uh, some other cryptocurrencies. Let's take a look at Chainlink I have here from Average. We've got Link, um, or Cosmos also. We can take a look at Cosmos. Rose, Rose is absolutely exploding. Um, let's take a look, guys. Thank you, moderators. I've got an insane support here with from my moderators. Thanks very much, guys. Insane support. Um, right. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Um, chain link. Let's take a look at link. And I'm just going to do a quick one. I take a look at link every single day. Just a nice consolidation here above major, um, above this resistance that's turned out beautifully into support. Uh, we've got like a, a huge channel here on chain link create, created right there, uh, or ascending wedge. Yeah, it may be, it's maybe kind of an ascending wedge. I would be a little bit cautious with this. We're probably creating also some bearish divergence. Yeah, we could see a corrective move on Chainlink back down to the $24 uh, potentially in the next coming days. So there's something that we need to pay attention for Chainlink in the immediate short term. We might have one last leg up and then it might be a corrective move. Why would we have one last leg up? Like I said, we did have some targets here for Chainlink from the top to the bottom of this major drop starting from November. Um, yeah, we got Golden Pocket basically at the 29.5. You know, if we do see that level in the next coming days, it's just getting squeezed into this ascending wedge and we might have a, a pop down for, you know, and, and hopefully, hopefully we are gonna create a massive higher low to continue to the upside. But yeah, like corrective move, if we do pump, I would say, yeah, 29.5, 30 is maybe good a good level to, to short link in the immediate short term for for to come back down to the basically the 20 low 25 24 dollar range very very likely um just quick analysis on in the immediate short term i like doing a bit more um link take profit range says randy all depending if you i mean if you did long chain link at uh 24 dollars you know, we were talking about Chainlink getting a massive bounce from this level, right? We did break out and we talked about, you know, the $24 range to get a, a nice bounce from this level. We basically hit the $23 area. And um, yeah, our, our, our target was just at the, you know, in between $28 and $30 we, we were talking about on, on the stream, right? Because we, we, we did see the Fibonacci levels and we were talking about in between 50% and and golden pocket 50 percent is 26.8 27 dollars but i was saying you know it's very very likely we're going to go above that level so the tw in between 28 and, and 30 dollars was the take profit area there is a possibility that um link might get one last leg up in the next coming days before we get a, a corrective move um if we do have that corrective move i am expecting link to hold this uh, 24 dollar major support level um, you know, with some volatility. Look how he, the volatility is absolutely crazy. Could have a lot of volatility, you know, in between the, the 24 and $22. Uh, but yeah, it should correct. It should get a lot of resistance at the $30 range. Um, Antonio Esquivano, Andy Crack. I got one of my old schoolmates here in the comment section. Right, let's take a look at Let's take a look at um, other, what other cryptos shall we take a look at? Um, I have average here with a massive list. Okay, Cosmos was one of them. Let's take a look at Cosmos, um, Atom. Let's take a look at this one. Right, one of the last things that we were talking about here, and let, I'm, I'm gonna get some stuff out of the chart here from this um, Binance chart. We had a you know this symmetrical triangle breaking out from there. That was a textbook um, pattern that played out beautifully. They don't always play out. They're just uh, probabilities. We have like an we were looking for that inverse head and shoulder, very very choppy one. And these are very very hard patterns to find out, guys, because you know most of the people and you, you know a lot of people from you watching, you might think you know you, this guy's crazy. This is not an inverse head and shoulder. What the hell is he talking about? Um, <laughs> And um, yeah, basically, this is an inverse head and shoulder, but you're not gonna find a nice, beautiful inverse head and shoulder like this and say, okay, guys, let's all together, you know, trade the breakout because this is absolutely a perfect pattern. 
And no, you're going to see very, very choppy action. You're going to see it very hard to read sometimes. You might see a double shoulder, okay? Trading is not, is not easy at all. And basically here you have a, a, a double left shoulder, right? You have this kind of price action right there, choppy, choppy. You are stopping with volatility at that same range, but you have the head there, inverted head, and you have a quick small left shoulder, right? Uh, right shoulder sorry in this case well if it's inverted it might be left or right i don't know who cares um and then we bro broke out from this um resistance point and that is um we basically met the target from that okay you look at the 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 width of the head to the resistance from the head to the resistance zone and from the breakout and, and you, you you basically it's a textbook target there, right there, almost to the dollar um, target from this inverted and shoulder. Now what's happened here in the immediate short term is that we have created a double top. But um, yeah, we got a double top right there. But double tops only work out uh, as a down uh, side reaction only if you break the support level and there's no breakout here. I mean, this wick over here was already a, a long signal. This is another way to trade. This is absolutely a, a, a massive failure on breaking this low. So if you have an attempt, right, just without taking out the, the look at the other levels, guys, if you have an attempt on breaking these lows right there, and that's a beautiful, you know, a beautiful um, long opportunity right, right here, and a, a good, um, a good place to take targets, you know, from uh, this kind of uh, fail attempt um, would be, you know, at least a 50% level um, start taking profits. It's actually hitting the golden pocket ratio. We could get heavily rejected. We are, this is why we're getting rejected also because at 61% level, we could get heavily rejected to continue down here create a lower a lower high very very possible but if you know if you're in front of the charts and you see this candle where you have failed uh, breaking below this major support it's very likely you're going to get a, a um, you know a bullish reaction out of it um, and now i would stay very very cautious on this i would stay very very cautious on this we might be getting heavily heavily rejected from the current uh, price levels. Yeah, we're already seeing some, some wicks here, a little bit of consolidation. It is the 62% level. We might get rejected here on, on, um, on Atom. Even though it looks pretty good, it looks pretty good actually. Um, Andy Rune, what do you think about it? How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing very well. I haven't done much research on Rune, but um, yeah, let's let's take a look at Rune on the chart, see what's going on. I have a lot, a lot of cryptos here to, to look at. Rune, 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 Rune. What have we got here on the charts for Rune? Let's take a look at some... Um, I think Rune is in, a, in an excellent buy zone right over here. It's in an excellent buy, buy zone. Reason why is because of the amount of volume that there is down here. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, basically Rune, looking at the, the chart here with the volume profile, um, it's getting heavily supported. This could reverse heavily very very soon very very soon we've got excellent bullish divergence on um on the uh, our daily rsi we are creating higher lows on the daily rsi right there and we were creating lower lows this this one particularly this crypto and i have heard good things about it i haven't done my research myself um but from other you know cryptocurrency um, people, I have heard very, very good things about Rune, and by the looks of on the chart, you know, f first bullish shine right there at the lowest point of a down trend. So this is screaming for a long position. I think this one will do. Will have a very, very nice, um, very nice pump uh, to even the twelve dollars. I do see this one making a two x, 
um, from its current price levels in the next coming weeks. It might take days. One reason why is, you know, the amount of volume that has been created here, right? The amount of volume, you know, if I zoom out, we've got data here from this massive um, consolidation and we've got even more volume at these consolidations. But looking at the price action here above this range, above the $2.60, you know, most of the volume consolidated was at this level, right? We're here, here, here. And, you know, we've got also right there a lot of consolidation at these ranges. The rest of the ranges are quick up and down, quick ups and downs, as you can see. And no, cons uh, high, we've got a big consolidation right there. But basically, you know, it seems like a very solid level. We've got starting to have bullish divergence. This is screaming for a, for a pump. Where, where are we going to pump to? Well, we have to take a look at some major resistance zones. And it looks like that this is uh, potentially one of the most... Um, areas where we could get a stop and if we take a look at fib levels from the top to the bottom bit yeah i think potentially um in between 50 and 61 percent you might get some resistance at 38 percent because of this uh consolidation right there so it would be a good area to actually take some profits if you were if you are long in rune from this level um, it would be a great level to take some profits that 38% level because you got the 38% Fibonacci retracement and you got this peak over here, which is actually with, a, with another peak there. So it would make sense to take profits there. Very, very likely we are going to pump to that to that level. So almost $10. Um, Ruin, can Ruin be traded on, on Bybit? Let me just have a look. Guys, you know the deal. You, if you want the best bonus available, you got up to $4,100 worth of bonus. I don't think Rune is here, actually. Oh, yeah, it is. Rune. Yeah, yeah, Rune is here. I think it's supposedly it was going to be the best um, the best blockchain project with interoperability, if I'm not wrong, as in, you know, a lot of... Um, uh, a, a lot of swaps in between different blockchains supposedly it was going to be the best one a lot of good things uh, i read about it if i'm um, not wrong it rings a bell it rings a bell it was going to be the leader of interoperability um let me just take a look okay um right um let's take a look here at the comment section we've done rune right now we've done cosmos um let's take a look at sushi let's take a look at sushi i think sushi was looking pretty good also i'm trying guys i'm trying let's take a look at bitcoin here for one second what is bitcoin doing um s p here uh, is getting a little bit of rejection from this point it's a very very strong level I would become, let me just take a look at the S&P 500, one second, I'll give you what I think is happening. And also we'll be taking a look at um, um, at Bitcoin straight away, okay? So we've got S&P 500 and Bitcoin. And if the S&P 500 does have a sharp correction in the next coming days, I think by next week, I will be extremely bullish at this lower point, all right? At this lower point here of this ascending channel. Um, I'm not sure if that is going to happen, but if it does, I will be very, very bullish as soon as we start seeing a, another bottom sign because S&P also likes to do these kind of harmonic patterns as well. Let's see if we're, we're going to manage to to um, end up in a harmonic pattern. It will be nice to see a, a local high here in the next coming days to see what happens. Um, yeah, with the traditional stock market, Bitcoin, what's going on? It is actually getting rejected already. Oh, um, I was hoping here for Bitcoin to get a little bit of um, a little bit of more pumpy action to that range, and that would have would have been a potential good short opportunity. This might turn over right now. It might turn over, and you know we might could be creating a, another high there. It will be nice, guys, if we consolidate just at that level. I think it, um, you know basically the pumpy action is going to get exhausted, and we're going to have a rollover. The, I, I've explained why the reasons why. One of the reasons why is Fibonacci from this high to the low right there. It is the golden pocket range. We've actually almost hit it almost to the dollar. It was a few dollars away. That's 61, that first major level. Now, you do usually attempt to, to break it a few times in a consolidation. 
Uh, another reason why, like I said, is the, the amount of volume that there is right there. Remember guys, we we're in a downtrend. This is just a kind of the relief rally, right? This could end up in a dead cat bounce. We are in a massive downtrend. Stay cautious, whoever is extremely bullish just yet. I am macro bull for the mid long term, but short term, we just need to be a little bit cautious. We're still in a downtrend and um, also volume guys like i said volume you know these candles with volume is just yeah we're basically at that level where where it's going to be hard for the bitcoin price to to pump without any any retracement or consolidation right let's take a look let's take a look at, uh, at um what are the crypto what are the crypto dxy has broken down let's take a look at dxy um dxy has broken down dollar index Well, it's broken down finally from this major support level that we were analyzing. So it looks like it's gonna have um, a pretty sharp, um, well, it's already having a sharp correction. Yeah, it looks like we might be retesting uh, uh, this this low level here on the DXY. I think DXY is coming down to the 94.6 level. 94.6, it's a great Fibonacci level right there. And it's also, um, you know, a major support range right there, you got this. Resistance, resistance. We're taking a look at the first fib level right there, golden pocket. We're just at the 50% right now. It's very, very likely to come down here and we might be getting a massive bounce. So yeah, DXY dropping. I think it's not gonna have an immediate short-term effect on Bitcoin. Uh, DXY and Bitcoin are not um, um, are not really um, correlated in between each other. So if DXY pumps, Bitcoin dumps, if, Bitcoin, if DXY dumps, supposedly Bitcoin pumps, but it's not been happening for the last uh, for several months. So not paying too much attention on that at the moment. Um, link, please, I've taken a look at Chainlink. I've got uh, several Chainlink um, people here wanting me to take a look at Chainlink. I haven't taken a look at Matic. Uh, let's take a look at Matic. I did take a look at Chainlink, guys. I take a look at Chainlink every single time I do live stream. Always, always. I did take a look at... Um, Chainlink not long ago. Matic still in this insane, insane uptrend. Uh, you know the deal. What I think is happening here is that we are forming an ascending uh, accumulation cylinder. That is my opinion only. You know, there's no hype. When you have massive pumps, you have massive dumps, but this is a, a, a great sustainable growth in my opinion. And Matic, you know, huge amount of uh, projects are, are, are getting uh, built up on the Matic, Polygon Matic network. Um, it's almost inevitable that this is going to do well in the next coming uh, next few months. It will be one of those altcoins if Bitcoin goes sideways and slightly to the downside. Matic is going to do very very well. Layer two for layer twos and layer ones, I think are the are the main topic in this bull run. It's not um, it's not anymore about Bitcoin. It's it's about L ones and L twos. In my personal opinion, that's why I do have uh, a, a big bag of um, some different L2s and L1s. Um, Chainlink, please, I have quite a couple of link. Link, what's going on? Let's let's take a look at Link. I've taken a look at Link, okay, already, but yeah, let's take, take a look. I've got several links here in the... What is going on with Link? Is it pumping or is it dumping? Um, I mean, like I said, what is going on for Link? It is at a... There's a huge amount of volume here on the on the VPVR. We're just at the at the highest volume range from 2021 and uh, 2020. Uh, yeah, 2021 basically, almost at the highest range. This is why we are getting that that um, you know consolidation. Um, we are forming a very very nasty 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 um, on the four hourly bearish divergence, right? So, I think. We can see another pump for Chainlink to the 30, $30 range potentially, but we are forming like a very, very tight ascending wedge scenario that could break to the downside. So, uh, you know, maybe one last pump to that $30 range. And the reason why that is resistance also from the highs to the lows, we got that golden pocket ratio, ratio there, you know, so we could see a pump to that level in the next coming days and get a heavily breakdown. That is if we do not break down from this area now, because eh? uh, Chainlink has been doing pretty, pretty good for the last um, uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see see a, a major correction uh, to form a higher low, right? This, this correction is going to be bullish. This correction will be bullish, in my opinion. 
So stay cautious on that $30, we could get range, we could get heavily uh, resistance. Um, interested in female TA? Yes, guys, you have Natalie. She is live right now. Um, there you have link. There's my opinion on chain link. Um, yeah, this is, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. You know the deal. If you want to support the channel, make sure to subscribe. Smash up that like button. And yeah, Natalie is live right now. So I'm going to, you know, she is going to be the host right now. Um... The link is in the comment section, all right, guys. Thanks for the insane support. Let's take, take a look at Bitcoin here before we... Um, S&P is getting a massive rejection here. Stay cautious. This is potentially, you know... Uh, we might be getting a, a very, very strong resistance. It might be bearish for uh, tomorrow and Friday, potentially. It might be slightly bearish for tomorrow and Friday. Remember, like I said, we were just about hitting, you know, that golden pocket ratio slightly pumping above got heavily resistance let's see what happens bitcoin what is bitcoin doing getting um, that small correction i would watch out i would watch out if we start seeing bitcoin making these these the, this kind of action guys yeah stay stay cautious i think um this might be screaming for a correction right 44.5 is the the highest level i think of a potential um, correction on Bitcoin. Stay cautious guys, stay safe. We'll be doing some more tomorrow. Make sure to smash up that like button and subscribe to the channel. Check out Bitcoin Sensor's website and all of our socials down below for any updates on Bitcoin. Bitcoin Sensor's website was the latest news was about Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu gets listed on the largest crypto exchange in Mexico. If you wanna read that uh, article, it is in the Bitcoin Sensor's website. Totally free information. Thank you guys. Make sure to check out Miss Fibonacci. She is live right now. The link is in the comment section. Thank you, everyone. And I will see you in the next one.